The Deception of Self-Reliance. In her poem, Ozymandias, Percy Shelley tells of what a traveler saw in the desert. Two vast and trunkless legs of stone. A shattered face that was half buried in the sand. You could still make out the wrinkled lip and the sneer of cold command. On the pedestal where this proud image once stood were engraved the words. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. The poet goes on to say, today, nothing else remains. Because around this shattered statue lay an empty and bare land that stretched for miles. The poet was right, except for one thing. Something else did remain. God remained. God had been there looking on with pity as this proud king boasted so shamelessly. And God was there when his body was laid to rest in a tomb. And God was still there as the winds of heaven blew down the statue. God was there as the ruins reminded all men of the certainty of human decay. God was there in the beginning and he was there in the ending. This is a warning to all men that, you are in the hands of God whether you like it or not. I think the poet had in mind King Nebuchadnezzar when she wrote the poem. Nebuchadnezzar sought to elevate himself. He built for himself a 90-foot gold statue and set it in the Dura Plain. Anyone who refused to bow to this statue suffered a penalty of death. People who bowed to this statue proclaimed, O king live forever. But Nebuchadnezzar did not live forever. The only person who lives forever is God. The very person he tried to rob of his glory by erecting the statue. It was God who took away Nebuchadnezzar's life. So that man will be reminded that. All souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine, Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4. A rich man filled his barns with grains, his vats were overflowing with wine, his pens were full of animals. He sat back and told his soul. Soul. You have many good things laid up for many years. Take your rest. Eat, drink, be merry. Luke chapter 12 verse 19. Once again God had to teach man that all souls belong to him. You fool. This very night your life will be required of you. So the life of this man was taken away by God, whilst his barns were still full. The knowledge that God is first and he will be last should humble us. It should always remind us of how frail we are, and how utterly dependent we are upon God. Our continued existence on this earth is at the pleasure of God. Psalm chapter 104 verse 29 says. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. It will therefore be great wisdom for us to begin to live in the light of this truth. If atheists and agnostics settle in their minds the question of, who God is. They would walk more softly and speak less like gods. They would acknowledge that, after all, they are not really that important. Today, the rallying cry across the world is, find your own spirit. Very harmless and even uplifting and encouraging words. But it has a hidden truth. A dangerous truth that is harmful to you and your family. For, they contain dangerous spiritual traps that can ensnare many innocent people. This new, religion, or, movement, is calling on people to channel their energies to rely on themselves. Not on God, but on themselves. A man should find his inner strength and channel that energy to overcome all his challenges. If that sounds familiar, it is because it is an old, tactic of the enemy. It preys on man's desire to be, master of his own fate. And now we are being told that we have that control now. We are called to deal with feelings of hurt, anger, insecurity, and impatience by looking inside ourselves. You don't need the Holy Spirit to help you with that. You have the power within you to handle them. The psalmist said in Psalm chapter 44 verse 6. For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. There is an African proverb. Those whom the gods wish to destroy, they first make mad. I believe Bernard Levin appropriated this proverb when he said. Whom the mad would destroy, they first make gods. Since the dawn of time man has sought to be like a god. Our rebellions have all centered on the fact that we want to be masters of our own selves. At the Tower of Babel, 
we said to each other. Come, let us build ourselves a city, with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. A line that was taken directly from Satan's playbook. Satan also wanted to make a name for himself. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north, will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 13 to 14. And it continues today. Through seeking spiritual enlightenment and empowerment by knowing ourselves. Like Ozymandias, we want men to despair when they look at what we have achieved through our wisdom and strength. Like our forefathers who wanted to build the tower, we want to make a name for ourselves. Like Lucifer, we want to be like the Most High, in total control of our lives. God sits patiently, looking at the futility of our endeavors. He chuckles at our delusions and our plans. The psalmist says in Psalm chapter 2 verse 4. The one enthroned in heaven laughs, the Lord scoffs at them. Nothing was left of Ozymandias' giant monument. Nothing is left of the Tower of Babel. Nothing is left of Nebuchadnezzar's statue. But God still is, and he still directs the affairs of men. Jesus said, Without me, you can do nothing. The prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 47 verse 13 that, All the advice you receive has made you tired. None of all that can save you from the wrath of God which is to come. God is calling us to the old ways. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where the good way is, and walk in it, then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk in it, Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. We need to come to the realization that our accomplishments and successes are ultimately dependent on God's will and grace, and that it is inappropriate to boast or take credit for them in His presence. The old path principles teach us that. Your life is in the hands of God and it is Him we must depend on. Psalm chapter 3 verse 5 says, I lie down and sleep, I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. I hope you have been blessed by this message. Please subscribe, and share to support our work.